So as I've mentioned before, I use a base model MacBook Air for all of my editing. I use Premiere for my editing workflow and After Effects if I want to do any effects. So what I want to talk about today is the experience and what it's like to edit on this computer. So roll intro. And let's get started. Hold up. I have a message from the future. All right. These are really stupid, but so. At WWDC on May 31st, Apple announced the M2 MacBook Air. So the M1 video that I recorded before WWDC, actually, it's still relevant, and I still am editing on this computer, but I thought it would be cool to come in and kind of talk about the M2 and see whether it's worth buying the M2 now, or should you still get the M1? All right, so I'll be back. Sorry for the terrible Arnold impression. That was awful. I didn't even do an impression, really. I just said I'll be back. Before we continue, I want to get a few things about my workflow out of the way. I shoot in 1080p at 30 frames per second. I'm not shooting anything super cinematic, and I like the way 30 frames per second looks for YouTube videos. Now, I shoot in 1080p because that is the limit of my capture card. If I had a better capture card, which I do plan on getting eventually, I would probably be shooting in 4K. However, Right now, I'm limited to 1080p. And linked to that, the reason that I do use a capture card and OBS is because my camera has limits of 10 minutes in 4K and 15 minutes in 1080. So if I record internally, I have to get up and press record about 10 minutes into my video. And shooting takes me about 20 minutes because of all the times that I mess up. So if I were to shoot internally, then I would end up having to get up about halfway through to press record again if I shot in 4K or three quarters of the way through if I shot in 1080. This could really mess up my flow and it would mess up my framing. So I prefer to just record straight into OBS so that I don't have to stop my recording. Also, my camera does not have a flip out screen, so I do have to use OBS for monitoring anyway. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about the specs of this computer and how those fit into what I do. So the base model MacBook Air comes in with an eight core CPU, seven core GPU, eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but when I record my videos, I actually transfer them directly to an SSD after recording. And while the eight gigabytes of RAM and the low eight and seven of the CPU and GPU aren't a lot either, this is the M1 chip, which is like magic. The M1 chip is an ARM chip versus the old Intel chips that we were using previously in MacBooks. So because it's running on a proprietary architecture that's built by Apple for their system, the memory management is insanely good. And any applications that are optimized for M1 just run so well. All right, future Benzie cutting in again. So I want to talk about some specs on the M2 MacBook Air real quick. So the M2 is going to come in two new colors, Starlight and Midnight. And the Midnight looks really cool. It's almost a black with a slight tint of blue. It's a really nice looking color for the MacBook. However, watching MKBHD's video earlier today, apparently it's a fingerprint magnet. So we'll have to see about that one. Now, that's not really specs. We'll go into specs right now. It's going to come in with an 8-core GPU and 8-core CPU base, whereas the original M1 was coming in with a 7-core GPU and 8-core CPU base. You're still going to get 8 gigabytes of RAM as the lowest option for RAM, but you can now configure it up to 24 gigabytes, whereas before, 16 was the max. And coming to internal storage, 256 is still going to be the base. It's now going to have a 13.6-inch screen. It's got an improved FaceTime camera. We got MagSafe and still the two Thunderbolt port and like the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros we now have a notch at the top. All right back to regular benches. Another thing about the MacBook Air is that it does not have fans. No MacBook Air has ever had fans which can mean that the computer is extremely quiet. However it also means that while running intensive tasks this computer might heat up a little bit. To get around this I have an external cooling fan that also props up my laptop that I use while I'm editing. I most of the time don't even need it. My computer doesn't really heat up during editing. It's only when I'm using After Effects that it might get a little bit warm. However, I like to have it just to be safe. So another advantage though with the lack of fans is that this computer is very small and light, which means I can really bring it anywhere with me. The screen is a 13 inch retina display and it has 400 nits of peak brightness. That's not a ton. And I may want to invest in an external monitor at some point. One, something that's color calibrated better for color grading. And two, something that's a little bit bigger because I'm really blind. Lastly, I'll touch on battery life. So 
This battery is excellent if you are doing daily tasks, media consumption, document creation, web browsing. This computer can handle all of that really well. But as far as video editing, I'll say this. I generally have 15 to 20 minutes of footage that I've shot and I end up with about a 10 minute video. For editing a 10 minute video, it takes me about four hours, which includes the rough cuts, putting in any footage for B-roll or photos, adding in music and searching for that music or creating it, and creating any new effects that I want to do, as well as the final upload. All of this together takes about four hours, and if I have a full charge on my battery before I start, I can get through the entire process without having to plug my computer in but towards the end, it's almost dead. So your mileage may vary just based on the tasks that you're doing, but for me, the battery life is pretty effective. Where this computer does struggle for me, as I said, is After Effects. After Effects just got out of beta for the M1, however, I still think that there's some work to be done there. I can get maybe five, six layers in, and it does start to chug a little bit, and it will start to heat up. And that's not a lot of layers when you're working in After Effects. So keep that in mind if you are somebody that wants to do some heavy tasks like that, or CAD or animation. I can't really touch on 4K video that much. I did shoot my very first video in 4K, but that was a really simple edit. There was only maybe 30 seconds of B-roll on top of 10 minutes of footage. And I really didn't know what I was doing at that point. As far as I can remember, it seemed to handle it pretty well, but I really can't speak to it at this time. So what's the verdict on this computer? It can chew through a 1080 edit in no time at all, and it doesn't really slow down unless I'm getting pretty heavy with After Effects. Export times are pretty good for my 10 minute 1080p videos, it's typically like maybe 3 or 4 minutes. And if you are getting the model with the lowest storage, external media is your friend. This computer comes in brand new at $1,000, but you can get it refurbished from Apple for I believe $750, $760. So if you want a computer right now that's going to get your tasks done and you don't have a huge budget, this computer is the way to go. All right, future Benzie cutting in one more time. So apparently the new MacBook Air is going to have 1.2x the video editing performance of the original M1 MacBook Air. Now the price is actually going to be $1,200 and they're still selling the M1 at $1,000, which is what it was introduced at. So at 1.2x and 1x and 1200 and 1000 you're actually paying the dollar amount for the difference in video editing performance, if you want to think of it that way. So, is the M2 going to be the new budget king? It's not even a budget king, but is it going to be the base editing king? I don't know. I don't think so. Because I think that 1.2x performance is still going to have a bit of a problem when it comes to the intensive tasks that I talked about the M1 struggling with. To really get those things done, you're going to need to get the 14 or 16 inch Pro, which still have M1 chips, but the M1 Max and M1 Pro both will outperform the M2 in its base form. So would I pay the extra 200 bucks over the $1,000 M1 MacBook Air today? I don't know. Probably not. Do I want it? Of course, but is it worth it? Not necessarily. Now, I don't think it's great that the two-year-old M1 MacBook Air is still selling for the same price it was introduced at. It would be nice if they knocked a little bit off of that. You can still get it refurbished. It's $860. I messed it up earlier and said $760, but still $860 for this machine is fantastic. So I think the M1 Air is still a fantastic value prop, especially if you can get it on the refurb. All right, kicking it back to regular Benzie. I'm out. All right, that about covers everything I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. All right, have a great one.